We're about 20 miles from the Gulf of Mexico at Raymond James Stadium, just north of downtown Tampa, as we bring you the NFL on EA Sports. On the return is Sean Tucker. And a decent return there. He'll get this up just shy of the 30. Here comes Otten in motion. Right to the air, it's Mayfield. Ah, right away, they're coming after him, and they get him. A sack on the opening snap of the game. Prior to the opening kickoff, the home crowd is rocking. They're on their feet cheering. Well, one play in, got a little quieter in here. This defense came out, and they took the fight right to him, able to bring the quarterback down for an opening play sack to get their defense settled into this one. They'll run with the third-year man. It's Rashad White. And it'll be a pickup of three. So third down, forthcoming. Out of the ship guard, Mayfield. Going for it all. That is caught. And he'll be taken down at the 10-yard line. Well, they've come out swinging here on this opening drive through the air. And that's exactly what they wanted to do. Generate some plays, try to get some points. So not quite first and goal. It's first and they're pretty close. Baker going to hand it to White. Ah, uh, Shane there, down to the 10. Now after the run, we get a stoppage for an injured player. So as injured player, he'll take a timeout. They'll go again with White. Up at the six, and that sets up third and goal. To throw is Mayfield. Oh, got him again the second time with a sack on this opening drive. I'll tell you what, if the offensive linemen had the same level of fight and effort that the quarterback did, they wouldn't be in this situation. It's a shame. That individual effort went a long way towards extending that play, and it still ended up resulting in a sack. McLaughlin's kick is good, and the Buccaneers will take a 3-0 lead. And that's a good drive, right at move the ball down the field. I know they didn't get a touchdown, but that is a good positive result. Debo Sam to get a chance to return it. Five yard line. Oh, to begin with Purdy. That's complete to Pearsall. And they'll get about four here as he is taken down. Here's a second and six. So Kittle comes in. Mo He'll be run away. It's incomplete. Nice sample there, Mike. Being smart with the ball. I'm quite the ball out of harm. Live to play another down. Here comes third and six. Slot reserve. Headed right. On third down, it's Purdy. And that is incomplete. Gore was the intended target. And this continues to come up short down right in the face. So he out. This one fielded out beyond 25. And they'll tear. On first. And unable to flee. He decides to go with the safe throw and throws it well short of the sticks. And at this level, Mike, you just can't miss layups like that. 
We'll try again. It's second and ten. Here comes Otten in motion. Off the play fake. It's Mayfield. Uh-huh. When you put plays like this on tape, it sends a message to every defender across the league. When you play this offense and this guy has the ball, you better bring it when you come to contact hot. You're going to be on end of it. Here's a third and ten. Here comes Otten in motion. From the gun on third down, it's Mayfield. That is into the hands of McMillan. Number 15 gets 15 yards out of the one, and he's got a team of first down. These third down conversions are just so important, Mike. Everybody stresses we want to possess the ball, give our offense as much to end as many drives as we can, scoring points. So if you want to stay on the field, you better be good on third down. On first down is Mayfield. And they'll get about four here as he is taken down. Well, let's give some credit to the big boys up front in the trenches. They knew that blitz was coming. Held up just long enough that the quarterback could get that ball out safely and results in a completion. Here's second and six. That's Palmer, the man in motion. Throwing on second down, Mayfield. That's caught. Trey Palmer. And they'll move this one down inside the fourth. There's this misconception out there, Mike, that in the NFL, you have to run the same amount of run plays as you do pass plays. And as you're seeing in this drive, you can fall on one side of that coin a little bit more as long as you're able to remain effective and efficient. So far, their passing game has dominated here early, and that last pickup leads to first down. And he got rid of that one quickly before the receiver even knew what was going on. That's incomplete. Up until that incompletion, they've done a really nice job on this drive, Mike, picking up fresh set downs. And typically, throwing the ball on first down is a great way to do it. But now they find themselves in second and ten. Do you keep it in the air and try to get the first down here? Or is the idea to just make third down manageable and take your chances picking up a key third down? It'll be stacked up at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. These edge rushers, they are judged by their sack totals, Mike. They love to rush the passer. But they have responsibilities in the run game as well. Great job here, keeping it to no gain. It is. From the gun, it's Mayfield. He'll be forced to just throw that one away. It's incomplete. Got to give a lot of credit here to the coverage unit, Mike. There was plenty of time for the quarterback to work through his progression. I thought the protection was actually pretty solid. But at the end of it, there was just nowhere to go, and he had no choice but to just throw that ball away. So Chase McLaughlin will come in, and they'll try a field goal. This is going to be from 53 yards out. He is two for two. That kick is good. And the Bucks on the strength of two field goals, take a six to nothing lead. McLaughlin hit the field goal a moment ago and now he's back to kick this away. Samuel, gonna see what he can do. Nice job on the return. He's down close to the 35 yard line. Throwing on first down is Purdy. Throw that one away. It's incomplete. Purdy now on second down. Throw, left side, complete to Pearsall. And that'll go for a gain of seven. And it's going to set up third down. So they have these rules for the receivers, Mike. They call them green grass rules. And the idea is, if you're running across the field and you're looking at the quarterback, you're going to stay on the run. If you're not looking at the quarterback, that tells him, I'm going to sit in this soft zone. I'm going to, what they call, punch and pivot and stop 
and that tells the quarterback to put the ball on your chest. That nonverbal communication between the receiver and the quarterback recognizing when you're open, open, that's the stuff that makes a lot of these offenses so difficult to defend. This is why the timing of these routes is so critical. If that ball is thrown a little bit later, he's unable to keep his feet in bounds, but instead the quarterback is on time and accurate, and the receiver does a nice job not only securing the catch, but ensuring that both feet remain in bounds. And he's not going to get too far tackled after a gain of just a yard. All right, so there's really three areas that a modern NFL running back has to excel at. Number one, the traditional handoffs. Number two, and maybe bigger than all of them, you have to be at least serviceable out of the backfield in the passing game. Again in the air for Purdy. That's complete to Mason. Receiver just finds himself in a really nice groove, and there's these weird times in the game, Mike, where it just seems like every ball comes your way, every play they call you're wide open, and you just find yourself in one of those grooves that athletes talk about. So they got to continue to ride the hot hand because right now on that field, there's no mistake in who it is. So after the five yards are walked off, they face third and long. They'll throw again with Perth. And the rush gets home. He'll go down. They got him. Perfectly timed blitz there by the linebacker. Remember, when you go empty backfield, there's no extra protection. All you have is the five offensive linemen. It could be feast or famine. But in this case, when you time it right, man, there is no back back there to help protect the quarterback. And he comes away with the sack. And he'll get something there on the return. Able to take this back to the 20-yard line. Mayfield to throw it here on first down. And he will not get away. Terrific open field tackle. Gets him down behind the line. The quick passing game in the NFL, Mike, is so dependent on yards after the catch. You got to generate space with the scheme, and then it's up to the receiver to do the rest. In this case, nice job defensively, because this guy couldn't even get back to the original line of scrimmage. Second down throw for Mayfield. Open man, the tight end, Coe Keefe. And he'll be taken down after a gain of nine. And third down, coming up. On play action, Mayfield. He'll find his running back, White. He's got the first down, not by a whole lot. Will he gets three. That's all he needed for a new set of downs. This is a great example of where just having situational awareness is so critical in the huddle. When every one of those receivers, Mike's, breaks the huddle and go line up, they've got to know where that first down marker is. If your route calls, get by it, secure the catch, and bring up a fresh set of downs. Now... That play had sack written all over it. So that's a great job by the quarterback, not only escaping the initial pressure, even though he doesn't gain a whole lot, he's able to pick up some positive yards for what looked like a disaster in the start. They face second down and seven. Here comes Otten in motion. He finds his tight end, Keith. They'll get maybe three out of that one, and it's going to set up third down. You only get a one-yard buffer from the line of scrimmage for these old linemen. That time he strayed a little too far, and it draws the flag. He'll be stopped after a pickup of about three. The veteran Leonard Floyd, they're on the tackle. They need eight as they come up for third down. They send him right out of the slot. On third down, they'll set up to throw. And that is incomplete. 
Throughout this entire game, we've really seen this quarterback operate very efficiently, not only being able to spread the ball to multiple playmakers, Mike, but really complete a high percentage of his passes. So can't let that last incomplete break what's been a really nice rhythm so far. On now for fourth down, Trenton Gill will punt it away. Back deep for the Niners, Jacob Cowing. Now the return. And he's done after a short return. And that's where his team will get possession of the football. On first and ten, Purdy. Throwing it right into the hands of his running back. And that keeps him ahead of schedule. That's a first down completion of seven yards. We are through one. The Bucks have the early lead. We'll have more from Tampa after this. Here's second and three to go. Out of the gun. It's Purdy. And that's going to be incomplete. Coverage was good that time. The contact jarring the ball loose and forcing third down. Really nice job there by the defense defending the middle of the field. That is the most valuable real estate on. You know, every single offense is trying to attack the defense between the hashes. So give credit. They took away all the throwing lanes and that ball falls incomplete. And that one shut down pretty quickly. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage. Nothing more. You could just see the frustration on the running back's face as he's getting helped up off the ground. Like, there was just nowhere to go from the moment he was handed the ball. Give credit to the defense. Great job. Here's Mitch Wisnowski now. As he is on to punt it away for San Francisco. This returnable with Palmer. And he'll get forward a few yards on the return. And we'll take over. The drive begins with a run by White. And he's going to be brought down up past the 45. The ability to be effective on first down, Mike, it just makes that you do have to face a third down down the road. They're usually a lot more manageable situations, a lot easier to convert. Set to go now on first and 10. On first down, right back to White. Not much there, maybe a yard. Here's second and nine. Slot man in motion right. On second down, Baker. A short one there to Otten. And that'll go for a gain of seven. And it's going to set up third down. The drag route. We used to say this is day one install. Every single offense in the NFL has this sort of route, tight end position. And depending on the speed and the run after catchability of the tight end, Sometimes it can lead to some of the biggest gains. Contact up front. Did they get one of the defenders to jump? They'll send a tight end in motion. Mayfield to throw on first and ten. They'll be forced to just throw that one away. It's incomplete. Here's the quarterback doing everything in his power to extend this play, and none of his guys could get open. You got to see someone separate. Work with your quarterback. Go into scramble second reaction mode, and it's also give some credit to the back end, doing a nice job plastering with their assignment, and he had no choice but to throw it away. Out of the shotgun, Mayfield. Toward the middle of the field that time, but... Incomplete. Jalen McMillan, the one he was looking for there. Third down coming up. So on a day where he's completed, give or take half of his passes, Mike, you have to imagine there's a handful of throws he'd like to have back, and I think that last one falls in that category, but 
The biggest thing, and most fortunately for them, they find themselves with the lead despite a bit of an up and down performance out of their quarterback. 11 yards on the connection there. It's a first down for Tampa Bay. So far here early, Mike, the key for this offense has been their ability to maintain possession by converting on these third downs. It's going to be a big storyline the rest of the way. This defense has to find a way. When they force third down, they got to get off the field. Throwing is Baker. That is caught by McMillan. And this takes him into the red zone. He's brought down inside the 20-yard line. Nice first down pick up there by Jalen McMillan. And Mike, as he tries to find his role in this Bucks offense, I think a lot of his opportunities are going to come inside at that slot position. Not only his ability to find soft spots and have good instincts to get himself open and uncover, but also the quickness to win man-to-man. -man. And that combination is going to get him a lot of targets. Remember, he had five receiving touchdowns each of the last two seasons back in college. I think at some point for this quarterback, he has to start looking some other directions. I mean, he's tried to get the ball now to this guy multiple times, and all of them have resulted in incomplete passes. I'm not saying don't throw it to him in the future, but maybe get yourself a couple easy completions elsewhere before you look back in his direction. On the handoff, it's White running right to get back to the line of scrimmage but will not happen here I think he's gonna lose a yard this play here Mike is just all about the get off of the defensive line watch how fast they go when that ball is snapped nowhere for this running back except to go down for a loss to throw is Mayfield that is caught and the Buccaneers have got a first and goal he's out of bounds at the four yard line Two receptions for him on this drive. This one, good for 16 yards. I love the way the ball's been moving around to different guys this drive, Mike. I mean, it really keeps the defense guessing and off balance. And now, this defense is going to have to figure out how to keep this offense out of the end zone because it's first and goal. They'll run with White. This defense back up but stepping up. No gain on the play. It stays at the three. Patience is a great quality of a running back. You have to wait for holes and gaps to develop. But in this case, Mike, he just kept waiting and waiting, and nothing ended up happening. No gain. One more time, it's White. And he'll get about halfway there. That's a gain of two. Down to the two. and goal he'll try to run with White and he will dive into the end zone Rashad White touchdown Buccaneers so on third and goal they run it in sometimes Greg that's four down territory they didn't need to do it on fourth down taking care of it on the third down for the touchdown yeah, and when you find yourself down here this close, Mike, you have to finish these drives off. I'm with you. I think he was going to give his back two shots there to punch it in, but he only needed one. Here's McLaughlin now after the score. He'll kick this one away. On the return, it's Ronnie Bell. And he'll be brought down just beyond the 25-yard line. The break the huddle. Coming up now for first and ten. One of the tight ends in motion right. He'll run. This is Mason. And he'll be taken down up at the 40-yard line. Up until that run, this first half, it's kind of been tough sledding here for this run game. They'd love to see him get going. That last big pickup's going to go a long way. On the ground is Mason. And this time they are ready for him. He'll be thrown for a loss. No big game that carry. It's second down. 
Well, as been the case this entire first half, it's been the defense that's really carried the load for this team. Some offensive struggles, but they've done more than their part, coming through again with another big stop for a loss. On second down, Purdy. That's into the hands of Pearsall on the right side. He'll get about six before he's taken down. Here now, third and five. From the gun, it's Purdy. Has his man, it's Samuel. And the defense can't come up with a stop there. Gain a seven and a first down. From the shotgun, it's Purdy. And he can't hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. What a good job defensively to meet him just as the ball was arriving. And it'll be second down. Throwing again is Purdy. Off-balance throw. It's complete. Third and six. Back to the air again is Purdy. He's got his tight end, Kittle. And they're going to be set up in the red zone. They've got it inside the 15. Down at the 12. It's first and check. A run. And here's Mason. Fighting off defenders here. He'll churn forward and pick up three. Second and seven. Shotgun snap to Purdy. He pulls it in around the five. Just take what the defense is giving you. And you can stay ahead of the chains and just take these easy pitch and catch throws underneath pitch routes, quick game. Now it puts you in a lot more favorable down and distances to eventually attack this defense a little bit more downfield. Third and short. Purdy to the goal line and in. Jawan Jennings. Touchdown, 49ers. Now Jake Moody for the extra point. The kick is good. And the 49ers are on the board. It's now 13 to 7. So, following that touchdown, Moody is back out to kick it off. On the return, here comes Tucker. Now, on the return, he has lost the football. And the defense has it. A fresh set of downs to work with. It is first down and 10. Here comes Otten in motion. On first down is Mayfield. And this ball's going to be incomplete. When you air it out like that on these big shots downfield, they're not always high percentage plays. It takes a lot of things to line up timing-wise, location of the field, accuracy of the throw to result in those big plays. But I think they've got to continue to search for those and try to generate a little bit of a spark. Slot receiver headed right. Throwing on second down, Mayfield. And a good effort there defensively. It's knocked away and incomplete. In what's clearly become a passing league, Mike, if you're not actively rushing the passer, you have to be able to hold up in coverage. And that's especially true at the linebacker position. 
Great job here getting in those passing lanes and being able to break up that ball. From the gun on third down, it's Mayfield. And this drive is over before it can start. He's swallowed up to force fourth down. Sometimes, Mike, your greatest strength can also be a little bit of your weakness. In this case, he is so used to being able to buy more time with his feet, extend the play, give his targets more time downfield to uncover. In this case, nothing materializes, tried to do too much, and as a result, takes a big loss. And he's going to make a fair catch just beyond his own 40-yard line. Now it's the rookie out of Louisville. It's Isaac Dorendo. And the defense right on that. I don't know if keeping would have done any better. No game on that one. Just watch the speed of the pursuit out of this safety on this tackle, Mike. His ability to play from depth and attack the line of scrimmage and meet that ball carrier in the hole and keep him to no gain. You don't see a lot of safeties able to make that tackle in the open field. That's pretty impressive. On second down, Purdy. That's complete to Mason. And he's going to be taken down as we hit the two-minute warning here in this first half. They get 14 on that hookup. It's good for a Niners first down. And now you can see they're really getting in rhythm in this two-minute drive. Now, after that last completion, Mike, they cross midfield. Now the mindset goes to, all right, we got to come away with some points. They've got a quarterback who's in complete control, and they got to see if they can finish this thing off. So as halftime looms, Mike, they have to find a way to capitalize on this drive right here and make sure they end the half with some sort of points. Now, that incompletion, not ideal, but at the very least, it stops the clock. Catch your breath, get back in the huddle, and this next play, it's got to be a gotta-have-it best play call. And they'll get about eight out of that one, but still a little work to do now on third down. They need two. Here's Purdy. That's over the middle and taken in. He's got it. Purdy to Kittle for the Niners first down. What a luxury that certain teams, when they have a guy like this, I mean, not only is he the big target, but then to have that size and speed to run away from these linebackers and do so much of his damage after the catch. They send him right out of the slot. Again in the air for Purdy. That's taken in by Jennings. And he's close to another first down as he's brought down just shy of the marker. Here's second and two. Here's Purdy again. And he'll take it on in. Jawan Jennings. Touchdown, San Francisco. That is second touchdown of the afternoon. And that is number two. Greg, he is off to some kind of start of this one. Two quarters and two receiving touchdowns. Mike, this is one of those situations where as a defensive coordinator, you've got to give your group an answer because right now they don't have one for this guy. They didn't leave much time on the clock to put together a drive here at the end of the first half. And the kickoff's coming their way. Now it's Bucky Irving to return. And he'll be brought down past the 25 position to start this drop. And they're just going to run it here up the middle. And they'll bring him down around the 27-yard line. Linebacker Fred Warner brings him down. Yeah. 
So, halftime here. It's the visitors, the 49ers, who are on top as we toss it an hour or so east to Orlando and Jonathan Coachman standing by for the EA Sports Halftime Report. All yours, Coach. Here is Bell on the return. Nice job on the return. He's down close to the 35-yard line. Here's Purdy on first and 10. He gets it to Samuel, left side. And that keeps him ahead of schedule. That's a first down completion of seven yards. Here's a second and three forthcoming. Out of the gun, here's Purdy. That's over the middle to Kittle. I just love the feel this tight end has, Mike, for the defense when they play zone coverage. Certain guys, they want to run routes like their lines on a piece of paper, and they end up going from uncovered space to covered space, but not the case here. He knew he was open. He knew he was in the right spot. He stayed open. The quarterback delivered a good ball. Whoa, tough to bring down, and somehow he manages to get four yards out of that. Purdy works out of the pistol. The throw on the run is complete. And they'll move this one down inside the 40-yard line. And what really stands out about this drive is the ability of the quarterback to really spread the ball around to multiple targets and put so much pressure on the defense, deciding who do they want to account for because no matter who they try to take away, the quarterback's doing a nice job of finding the open man. First and ten. Purdy. On a throw here, right side. Falls incomplete. Ricky Pearsall, the intended receiver. And it'll bring up second down. Timing and trust. Critical elements of this quick passing game. If your target and the quarterback are not on the same page, it winds up being an incompletion and a wasted down. A second down throw here for Purdy. Downfield, he's got the big target, Jennings. He had two touchdowns earlier, looking to see what he can do here in this second half. That grab gets them a first down. I can't tell you, Mike, how many of these offensive skill players around the league, they look at man coverage as like a personal offense. After that last completion on the way back to the hole, I think he had a few choice words for him. I think he said, hey, man, you can't guard me one-on-one. -on -one. You better... The pass rush gets home, and he goes down. The offense goes from feeling really good about the previous play with a real nice pickup to then on the ensuing play ending up going the complete opposite direction. Really nice job here by the defense immediately getting back on track. And what do the coaches say? Just play the next play, and that's exactly what they did. Purdy now on second down. No one open. He'll drop it to his running back. They'll get maybe three out of that one, and it's going to set up third down. Man, he fit that one in a tight window. One thing he showed off was his arm strength and his accuracy, but in the grand scheme of things, it didn't really amount to much. Third down. Purdy. He'll try and get there on the ground. And that's a great job defensively here on third down. Not only taking away all the options down the field through the air, but when the quarterback decides to turn into a runner himself, they're able to converge and make the play and keep him short of the first down. On fourth down, it's Jake Moody time for the Niners. 
this a 31-yard attempt. Moody's kick is good. And the Niners add on to their lead. And this is what you want. I mean, you clearly have the advantage, but you want to continue to apply pressure. Can you score every time you get the ball? They're able to do that here. They tack on three and extend their lead. He'll get this past the 20 before he's brought down shy of the 25-yard line. They'll start this on the ground, and here's White. And some space opens as he's brought down following a gain of six. They'll come up now for second down and four. Here comes Otten in motion. A second down throw for Mayfield. Get this complete right side to Otten. 11 yards on the pass there. Good for a Buccaneers first down. Just seems like every year, Mike, the tight end position just continues to grow within the passing game and establishes a bigger and bigger role. And listen, I know I'm biased, but if you want to have a good passing game, you better have a good tight end. Mayfield to throw on first and 10. A short one there to Otten. And he'll get about eight on that one. Most of it coming after the catch. It's second down. The drag route is such a good way to get the ball early into the hands of your tight end and take some pressure off the quarterback and give him an easy completion. The size and the athleticism allows them to try to pick up more yards but do it after the catch. On second down, a run with White. And the defense all over this one. They knock him down. It'll go down as a loss of two. Second and two. You're thinking, I got two downs to get two yards. How hard can that be? Well, against this defense, it turns out to be a big challenge. They take you back for a loss of two, and now you find yourself on third down. From the gun, it's Mayfield. And on third down, that ball incomplete. And the success of this play, Mike, all comes down to the timing of the defender. You get there a little bit too early, you risk pass interference. You get there a little too late, it's a big pass completion. Timing your hand and playing through the ball is something they work on with these defenders all the time. And next time they throw the ball downfield, I wouldn't be surprised if they target somebody else. And we will not have a return here. This one angled out of bounds. Throwing on first down is Purdy. Samuel has it working the middle. And they'll get about half of what they needed. It's a pickup of five and sets up second and five. Looks like movement over there on the left side and the flag is down. Aaron Banks played his college ball at Notre Dame. Guilty there. He'll get it into the hands of Kittle. And he's going to get this one out to the 43-yard line. Kittle's able to secure the catch and bring up a fresh set of downs. And he was the only tight end in the entire league last year, Mike, to go over the 1,000-yard mark. And he only did it in 65 catches. Here's a guy that is an all-pro player year in and year out. And there's not a whole lot in this game that he can't do. First and 10 for Purdy. Open man is Jennings. And they bring him down there, but it is inside the 10. It is going to be first and goal. This is one of those plays, Mike, where just everything aligns. It's the right play call, the right target, an accurate ball, and then a lot of room to run after the catch. So if they can continue to find these matchups and these holes in the secondary with this quarterback and this playmaker group, man, this is a tough offense to slow down. And he's going the wrong way. Dropped back at the 7. I'd like to see that running back be a little bit more decisive with his cut, Mike. You can see he was a little hesitant. And once you're late making that decision, you just kind of get strong laterally 
Great job there by the defense, and he has no choice but to take that loss. On second down, Purdy. Looking middle there, but it's incomplete. The whole idea of that short pass is designed to get the ball into the hands of the receiver in space and let him do the rest after the catch. But the key word there, Mike, is get the ball into the hands of the receiver. He doesn't secure the catch, so there is no run after. Third and goal, Purdy. And that is caught in the end zone. He's in. Debo Samuel. Touchdown, 49ers. Tight spaces down there. Things happen quick. Greg, a quick decision and great execution for the score. You're exactly right, Mike. Down here this close to the goal line, everybody's clock has to speed up. Not only the quarterback processing to get the ball out of his hand, but you have to win as a receiver quickly and give the quarterback somewhere to go with the ball. It was that quickness at the line of scrimmage that led to that touchdown. So, following that touchdown, Moody is back out to kick it off. To return is Tucker. He'll work his way across the 25-yard line. Here's first and 10. On first down, it's White. And he'll get about six there, setting up second down. Out of the shotgun, Mayfield. That pass complete to the veteran, Sterling Shepard. And that's a first down. It will be a gain of eight. Shotgun snap and a give to White. And not much there. He's back to the original line. No gain on that one. Well, this play, Mike, was clearly about the job of this defensive line. Great job holding their ground, forcing these blockers to be stood up. Nowhere to go for this running back, and they hold him to no gain. Throwing on second down, Mayfield. That is caught by McMillan. Well, he's brought down. That pass is going to pick up four and bring up third down. I wouldn't be surprised if some point here in the future, Mike, this quarterback drops back. It looks like the same old hitch route underneath, and they give a pump fake and go. You can lull a defense to sleep with a lot of these underneath quick game passes, and once you do, you can try to go for the big one. Really nice job here, not only avoiding the rush on third down, but quickly finding that crease, get downfield, and he's able to pick up the first down. On first and ten, here's Baker. That's over the middle and intercepted. That's the linebacker, Fred Warner. To throw on first down is Purdy. That's complete to Mason. Throwing on second down is Purdy. Right side, pulled in by Samuel. And he's going to be brought down here on what will turn out to be the final play of the third quarter. So they come to the line for first down and 10.
From the gun, it's Purdy. And he'll be forced to just throw that one away. It's incomplete. There was no hesitation from the quarterback. From the jump, he knew where he wanted to go with that ball, but still leads to an incompletion. They're just still not quite on the same page. They'll try again here, second and 10. Handoff here, up the middle, and nothing on that one back to the line of scrimmage, and that is it. You want to see linebackers play downhill, Mike, meaning there's not a lot of side-to-side -side pursuit. They're attacking the line of scrimmage, attacking the ball carrier. That's exactly what we saw out of this guy here. He's able to make the stop at the line of scrimmage and keep it to no game. On third down, it's Purdy. Looking to Samuel on the out route. And a good job here defensively. They did not let him get away. He's well short of the first down marker. I think this is one of those plays that when the ball carrier watches this back in the film room tomorrow, he's going to be a little frustrated with himself. If he could just have made that one guy miss, he picks up the first down. Instead, he gets brought down short of the sticks. And now they got a fourth down decision to make. He is two for two. That kick is good. And the 49ers will add to their lead here in the fourth quarter. Moody comes back on the field after making the field goal. He's set to kick off. Irving now on the return. And he'll be brought down just beyond the 25-yard line. On first down is Mayfield. Looking middle here, and he's got McMillan. An enviable spot to operate from. Here's second and in inches. They'll keep it on the ground. And he'll work his way for about four yards. And that's good enough for a first down. run here the hole closes quickly he'll pick up about three on second down Baker that's his tight end, Otten. And they'll move this one down inside the 40-yard line. Things certainly look a little improbable right now, Mike, but I wouldn't say impossible. I think they've got to capitalize on this possession to pick up some points. Every single possession right now is priceless. Points, possessions, and then they got to get some defensive stops. Mayfield to throw it here on first down. That's to the left side. Caught by McMillan. And they bring him down inside the 25-yard line. Now, this is the epitome of a really short throw and a really nice run after catch. And listen, for a quarterback, it all counts the same. You don't always have to throw the ball downfield to generate explosive plays. And these drag routes can be very, very effective. And he finds a little bit of space. He'll take this forward for a gain of four. Here's a second and six. Baker to throw. He'll find McMillan here. And the Bucks are going to have a first and goal coming up. They try to finish off this drive with six points. And this is what the offense needed. Now, after that last completion, you still trail here in the fourth quarter. You need scores, and you need scores fast. So they cannot take their time. I wouldn't be surprised to get them right back up on the line of scrimmage and try to score here. 
and he will score. Game on. Rashad White, touchdown Tampa. Two touchdowns for him now on the afternoon. Taking care of business on the ground to get the score. And Greg, the big guys up front, they deserve some praise on that one. Absolutely, Mike. And it really only takes one guy to distort the defense and win his block. But in this case, give credit to the entire unit. They did their job, and they reward their offense with a touchdown. So, things a little more interesting now. Back to a one-score game as they kick it away. Here is Bell on the return. And a solid run back there. He'll get this out past the 30-yard line. On first and 10, it's Purdy. He'll complete that to his fullback. And he's brought down after a game of six on first down. So I don't think his fullback was his primary option on that play, but a really nice job by the quarterback working quickly through his progression, getting the ball down to his big fullback, and he's able to pick up a nice game. Purdy now on second down. He gets it to Samuel, left side. This crowd into it now as we get to third down. A tight end in motion now. Trying to pick this one up on the ground. Pick up of 11 yards on that one. First down, 49ers. You know, there's all this talk, Mike, about the value of the run game in today's NFL. You know when the run game matters? It matters right now. Fourth quarter, you've got the lead. Can you lean on your running back and offensive line to close this game out? Here's Purdy on first and ten. A toss, left side, caught by his running back. And he's brought down after a gain of six on first down. They'll work now on second and four. Throwing from the gun is Purdy. Samuel has it working in the middle. And that's a first down. It will be a gain of eight. Blown back in the backfield. He'll get the carry here. He'll dodge one would-be tackler and wind up getting a nice gain of six on the play. Now Purdy. He'll get this out to his running back. And this one's going to be a loss of yardage. He's marked out of bounds behind the line of scrimmage. What they teach these backs is when you catch a check down, immediately try to get vertical. Try to put a hole in the defense coming to rally tackle. So give credit to the defense here. They strung this out and made him go sideways. And they forced him to go so far sideways, he went out of bounds. Third down. Purdy. A short one there. Caught by Kittle. And a good short tackle right there. It stops him a good distance short of the marker. It sets up fourth down. So the hope is when you call these underneath drag routes, you're trying to have your tight end come out the backside of the defense in space. So when you put the ball on him early, it leads to big yards after the catch. In this case, they don't get the real big play they were hoping for, but they'll definitely take it. So it's not exactly what you're looking for when you set out on a drive, but at the same time, you don't want to come away empty-handed either. So in this case, they'll take those three points. On the return, here comes Tucker. And 
that'll be brought down past the 25. Decent field position to start this drop. Here comes Otten in motion. Off the play fake. It's Mayfield. And that ball out of reach toward the sideline. It'll be an incompletion. Can't exactly put my finger on it, but it just seems like this entire game, like this passing game and this quarterback specifically, they've just been off. And whether it's missing these big shots downfield like he did there or just simple underneath layups, there's just something about him today that doesn't look right. And I think it's a big part of the reason they find themselves trailing here in the fourth quarter. And that'll go for a gain of seven. And it's going to set up third down. From the gun, it's Mayfield. And this is going to be incomplete. That is great work there, making things difficult defensively. It'll set up a fourth down. And that's exactly how you teach it. They want these defenders to time the hit that right when the ball gets there, you separate the receiver from the ball. And those are the ones on offense, man. You just have to make that catch, Mike. I know it's easier said than done, but you know the hit's coming. You've got to squeeze that thing, brace for impact, and make that play for your offense. Some teams just have a stronger appetite for being willing to go for fourth down tries, even on their side of the field, Mike, and we're seeing it so much more often. The days of just punting the ball back and forth and saying, hey, we're going to play good defense. Remember, the better your defense, that doesn't mean you should punt. The better your defense, the more chances you should take on offense. It's a pickup of 13 yards. It's a first down for Tampa Bay. Every quarterback's dream is, can I get the ball out of my hand as fast as possible and get it to a guy that can do the rest after the catch? And it seems like nowadays throughout the entire league, the best offenses thrive in yards after the catch. This is one of those situations that plays directly into the hands of the defense because think, Mike, they know this offense has to be one-dimensional. This has to be a pass. So what do they do? They bring in extra defensive backs. They clog up the back end. And at the end of the day, there's just nowhere for the offense to go with the ball. Who else? Another catch for his favorite target. And they'll work this close to a first down, maybe just a tad short. A big play in the game now. Third down and one. Out of the shotgun. Mayfield. Oh, he's going to be bottled up and taken down. They got him. When you can win so fast as an edge rusher, you put so much pressure on the quarterback to speed everything up. He can sense that pressure coming either from his front or backside. It either speeds up and leads to an errant throw, or in this case, it leads to a sack. Now or never, they'll throw on fourth down. And that is incomplete. They had their chance. They took it there. Look, they're trailing late. Got to let it fly. This will wind up a turnover on downs. Drive will start on the ground. And he's going to be taken down. And that will take us to the two-minute warning. Here's the San Francisco offense, ready to take possession of the ball once more. They'll start with great field position, right at midfield with a first down. They'll come up on a second down and eight. Back to the ground, he'll get it again. And he'll only manage to pick up three yards, and that leads to third down.
They'll try to get this one on the ground. The Buccaneers forced to use their third and final timeout as they'll discuss what's to come as fourth down is looming. The 49ers out for the punt as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And no chance of a run back here. This one's going to sail out of bounds. They'll drop to throw. There's that man again. Another catch. And they'll bring him down, but not until he gets to the 38-yard line. Not a whole lot complicated about this play, Mike. That was understanding where the holes of the defense were. Remember, in this zone coverage, you got to find green grass. Get past the first down marker, be friendly to the quarterback, and then the ball has to be out on time before those zone defenders can react to the receiver. It's exactly how it played out here. You can drop all the fancy plays you want, but when the quarterback and the receiver see it through the same set of eyes, it's virtually impossible to stop. Anytime you're facing a zone defense, you're working from your first progression all the way through. But when guys are open in this level, Mike, they don't stay open very long. So what they taught us as receivers, if you're open, stay open. And if you're not open, you better get open quick because that ball is coming out. So defensively, there's always the initial pass coverage plan. And then when that breaks down and the quarterback goes into scramble mode, how fast can you then move on to the second phase and what they call plaster, meaning find the nearest receiver and almost play a man-to-man. -man. And it's exactly what they did here. And there was nowhere for the ball to go. And he's forced to just throw it away. He'll be forced to just throw that one away. It's incomplete. I think the biggest issue and why they find themselves trailing in this game, Mike, has really just been the ups and downs of this passing game. At sometimes he's highly accurate and efficient, but at others, he just misses too many easy throws. Question is, are they going to be able to overcome this quarterback inconsistency and pull this game out? That is caught by McMillan. Got to have it, fourth and four. They'll go, Mayfield. He's got his man, right side, it's complete. And he's gonna have the Buccaneers first down. They come up with a big one there to keep the drive moving, and then some. Great pre-snap recognition here by the quarterback. He looks outside and sees man coverage, and he knows exactly where he's going to go with the ball. Now it's up to the receiver to create separation at the top of the route. Ball's on time, great placement, nice big pickup. They'll come up now for second down. Now Mayfield. He'll be forced to just throw that one away. It's incomplete. I can sit up here all day, Mike, and we can talk about the missed throw, but I think a lot of the credit has to go to the pass defense. Not only did they do a good job making it difficult for them to complete the pass, but I think they saved the touchdown along the way. So after back-to-back -back incompletions, it is now third and 10. That's Palmer, the man in motion. From the gun on third down, it's Mayfield. He'll be forced to just throw that one away. It's incomplete. I'd say one of the most critical elements of a dynamic offense, Mike, is how efficient are you on third down? It's something these teams stress all week. Here's an opportunity to continue to extend this drive. The defense wins this time and brings up fourth down. On fourth down, Mayfield. And he's going to go down. The pressure once again too much. And that should wrap this one up. 
victory formation here as he's down to a knee. So that'll do it for us, for Greg Olson and our terrific team behind the scenes. I'm Mike Tirico. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. Follow us on X at EA Madden NFL. So long, everybody.